Hey everybody and welcome back to the arena. I am Baz. I'm joined by Black Bart Pirate once again for the Tuskers versus Snuffed Out. And they were talking about the flagships on the desk, but Snuffed actually choosing not to bring their flagship girl and instead opting for this triple napop comp that we've seen a couple times so far, backed up with two Maguses, uh, a Blackbird, a couple Deacons, a Hyena, and a Vengeance. Bart, do you want to run us through what Tuskers have opted for? Yeah, Tuskers has gone for a double Ashat core with a Guardian, and they have also brought pretty uh pretty light back end got three maulers you know a couple sentinels magus pontifex uh these maulers are in fact oh checking looks like they do not have guns on them so there's uh they're pretty probably like full new tackle maulers which is actually kind of scary and we're gonna see how they do as they are pushing straight in right off the bat these apox are doing a lot of damage to that sentinel yeah, I expect to see potentially a smart bomb on those smallers to use them to kill off rep drones. Obviously, they're out of a skybreaker, so rep drones can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, these Napox, I, this is, I think, the correct call for them. They want to kill these Sentinels because the longer this match goes on, the tracking disruptors from the Sentinels would be a real pain in the ass. And they are trying to kill VLD, but then he's sort of holding for the time being. It looks like they he was able to pull far enough a range, get some transversal up, and you know all of those tracking disruptors are pretty strong. A uh, hard swap over to Jason, they might just pop him right here. It looks like the Lodge is going to have a little bit of trouble, but you know Guardians have huge rep range. We'll see if he holds him up. Jason's going down, hitting his low armor, and he, and he goes down. Does pop. That's huge, killing that first Sentinel, because obviously these Napox, the more every time they kill a Sentinel, their effective damage gets stronger. They're going to get more tracking. They're going to get more optimal. Um, assuming that is where the uh, the Sentinel TDs are going, which it for, which it for sure is. Um, and yeah, now it puts even more pressure on the Tuskers team. Um, and these Napox, the, the Lashaks are closing in now. Um, Going to start applying nuke pressure to these Napox. Yeah, the Lashaks are uh, actually on top of Nuke Michaels, and it looks like they're going to do some damage. So, you know, we've seen Lashaks many, many times. As the match goes longer, they just get stronger and stronger. And these Napox are actually having trouble uh, hitting the final Sentinel. So I'm wondering if you know, maybe it was more of a transversal issue and not so much the tracking disruptors. So, you know, good piloting on VLDs, keeping him alive right here. And the Napox are actually, I, I think they need to swap targets. Like they need to go for something else at this point. If, you know, if you're not taking the Sentinel down, start using your DPS because Nuke Michael is dropping really fast. That Lashak damage is pretty much unreppable. Yeah, they killed, they killed off the Sentinel, but like you said, the newts at the start fitted presumably to the Molas and also the small newts that are going to be on that Sentinel and, of course, the Lashaks. There's going to be so much newt pressure on the field here, which, of course, is not only going to be stopping the guns of the Napox, but it's also going to be really, really crippling to these Deacons trying to keep them alive. Um, and, of course, like I've said before, heavy newts, not such a big deal. And Deacon, you activate your cat boost, the heavy newt cycle is so slow it doesn't really matter. But small newts, presumably on the Malas and on the Sentinel, are really, really dangerous for Logi Frigates. Yeah, we are uh, we are seeing Snuff recognizing that they are not taking it down, and they've actually swapped over to the Guardian. It's starting to take a pretty good amount of damage. I believe that the Hyena from the Snuff side has it webbed down, uh, and you can see that Tuskers is trying to take that Hyena down with light drones, but you know, at the end of the day, these two Lashaks are just chewing through these Napox, and I, I think that Snuff, they need to jam these Napox out or something, like stop the damage ramp, do something with that Blackbird besides going after Logi right here. Yeah, it's... It's not looking good for Snuff at this point, because obviously with this kind of comp, these three Napox are pretty much their only damage. A Black God's not doing any damage, a Hyena's not doing any damage, Deacon's obviously not doing any damage either. So it's just going to be these three Napox, and with effectively a third of their damage already gone, and Miss Kesha not long to follow, um, they're only going to have one Napox left on the field, and it's a risky comp to bring. I mean, we've seen it a couple of times before, but if it seems like if they can, if the opponent can get on top of your Napox and just break through them, um, you you rapidly lose damage and then once you've lost one or two you really don't have the damage to break anything else on the field and you just snowball into a loss yeah and i, I think we're seeing uh you know like you said the the maulers weirdly enough the newt maulers plus the sentinel i think that mass amount of newt pressure on top of these two deacons on the snuff side is just making it impossible for them to keep up like they're the jams from this blackbird are actually stopping the Lashak ramps, which is why Miss Kesha hasn't gone down yet. But it's not enough to actually keep them going. And Miss Kesha does drop here. You know, Newt Maulers, like who would have thought that's going to be the thing that pushes it for you? Yeah, I'm really interested by the dynamic. I mean, the, the desk talk about it all the time as well between the Logi Frigates and the Logi Cruisers, because Logi Frigates, I think, tend to sort of fare better in comps where you want to try and stay compact. Um, but, I mean, in this case, Snuff have got a, a, a sort of fairly... I mean, sorry, Tuskers have got a fairly compact comp themselves with all the newt pressure here on, on the Sentinel and the Maulers. Um, as soon as they get in the middle of the action, um, it's then very, very difficult to Snuff to get them off, of course, with these Napox as their only damage. Yeah, I think they just weren't able to do anything. Like, 
that's that's like 20 small newts or 20 medium newts depending on how these maulers are fit alone which you know spread across the blackbird and the the two deacons you're not doing anything uh, there's comments going out in local like good fight that's a lot of newts uh so clearly the problem was i'm sure they weren't able to do anything i was looking at these uh napox and they weren't even shooting half the time so you know really good call on tuskers uh, just a full out newt setup just ripping snuffed apart and it, it was really cool to see like a different kind of control you know it wasn't ecm it wasn't any of that stuff it was just them not being able to activate their modules yeah i wonder what this this match might be sort of indicative of the direction the meta is heading because as we saw earlier in the match i think it was exodus against forsaken empire they also brought a full new comp with two, two full new dominixes and a full new armageddon um so i'm wondering if we're heading towards a sort of more capacitor warfare focused meta um yeah, sort of all these all these laser boats that we've seen be particularly popular. We've seen Abaddon's, we've seen Oracles, we've seen Napox, all this sort of stuff. Um, obviously, Logi frigates, as I've already mentioned, they all struggle very, very heavily with newt spam. Yeah, they really do. I mean, the, the Sentinel alone, just one Sentinel being left alive shuts down both of them. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. We are seeing, like, the damage from the Tuskers wasn't particularly high. You know, like you said, bringing just two Lashax, it's, it's a risk. I mean, you do have massive potential damage, but... It can also be a little bit dangerous, but I mean, if if the opponent can't activate their reps or activate any of their modules, who cares? Yeah, another thing I like about these maulers is they're they're kind of an unattractive primary. You know, you look at a mole, you think it's going to be a brick. It it hasn't really got much in the way of guns. I mean, if you if snuff primary the maulers here, they're not they're still not clearing any damage off the field. They're they're the value of getting the newts off the field is potentially stronger than what they did, but you're still not clearing any damage, and those Lashaks all the time are ramping up. So it forces the opponent into making a difficult decision here of, you know, everything is an unattractive primary. Do you want to shoot the Maulers? I mean, maybe, but also you look at a Mauler and you think, I still take three minutes to kill one. Um, and yeah, that's... And Matt Riley will finally boundary. I think he got to 193 there was the last number I saw, so not breaking any records. And with that snuffed out, unfortunately, out of the tournament, Tuskers continuing to the next round, and we'll send it back to the studio.